I am so beyond disgusted and appalled at the decision that was just made in Ferguson to not indict the police officer that shot and murdered Michael Brown, an unarmed black teenager. I've been working on a poem about this topic since August 17th of this year, 2014, and something prevented me from being able to finish it then. Last night and this morning, I was able to write again, and all of a sudden this morning, I finished this poem, and I was going to wait to record it on a video more professionally later, but given the events of this evening, I felt that this needed to be said. So this is my dedication to black lives. Growing up in the city, every day was like a block party. Ponytails and fitted caps, old men playing bachata with checkerboards on their laps. And everywhere, brown faces. Little brown bodies dancing in fire hydrogen waves. Any sign of fear, there were no traces. Just smiles and imagination in our eyes. Today, it was let's make believe we're spies. Working for the CIA, every day we'd play those little brown bodies. Brown bodies. Brown faces. Brown people everywhere. Brown people and white cops. Brown people, white cops. White cops from white suburbs, in different boroughs, in different neighborhoods, miles away from mine. How was this fine? Because even as children, we knew how they felt about us. Our little brown bodies automatically made us sus, which in turn taught us to mistrust them. And we knew how it would end. A stop and frisk for a decriminalized dime bag in front of grandma's house. Run up the stairs because you're scared. Try to flush it. Should have rushed it. Because for drowning the pot, you got shot in your grandma's bathroom over a dime bag. While my white friends downtown sell weed by the pound, these dealers on bikes don't even get a frown when they pass by these cops. What's the chance they'll get stopped? But that's the privilege of the skin to which you weren't akin, Ramarley. And I could say I hardly knew you, yet I wept at your death, knowing it could have been my brother or friend whose life was put to an end because you had a brown body. You beautiful descendant of the diaspora, disallowed to move forward faster. And I'm constantly reminded of how our society is so blinded, always trying to make excuses. Don't make this a color thing. Everybody wants to put their two cents in, which proves worthless to me. As long as we keep getting murdered, here's some names you should have heard of. Sean Bell, what the hell? Unarmed and 23, killed the night before his wedding, a husband never to be. Eric Garner, Staten Island father, unarmed and 43, choked to death for selling cigarettes, left to die on the street. Izell Ford, please help me, Lord, unarmed and 26, he was autistic. Cops shot him face down. How ballistic. Amado Diallo. Is this getting hard to swallow? Unarmed and 23. Immigrated to America only to learn the consequences here of what a black man is to be. Michael Brown in his graduation crown. Unarmed and 18. Shot dead in his chest. His body in the street for four hours uncleaned. Then there was the Martin's son, 17, Trayvon. And this sad list just goes on and on. So listen to us when we express our anger and fear. For you would do the same for those you hold dear. If you somehow disagree, I'll call you a fool. But I'll stop making it a color thing when you do. A dedication to black lives. <laughs> You don't have to do it yourself. Man, can you back up, please? Back. We're trying to give him some air. We're going to get an ambulance, all right? Yeah, back so up. Y'all got him on the floor. Y'all got him on the floor. Y'all talking about back up. You hear this? Mm -hmm. Now they're trying to get him an ambulance. After they uh -huh. harassed him, slammed him down, NYPD. Uh, you understand? Hey, you go. 